I want to turn to North Korea, General, because the president is sounding hopeful now that this summit is going to take place. Here's what he said over the weekend. A lot of people are working on it. It's uh, moving along very nicely. So we're looking at June 12th in Singapore. That hasn't changed. Uh, and it's moving along pretty well. So we'll see what happens. And then he tweeted this out this morning. We have put a great team together for our talks with North Korea. Meetings currently taking place concerning the summit and more. Kim Young Chol, the vice chairman of North Korea, headed now to New York. Solid response to my letter. Thank you. General Keene, do you think this summit happens in a few weeks as originally planned? What can come out of this Singapore summit? Well, first of all, the President Trump's in a driver's seat ever since he said he wasn't going to go to the summit. That, that put him clearly back in charge and, and stopped the, the gaming that was taking place at the time for a couple of weeks by China and Kim Jong-un when they were pushing away from the summit. Obviously, North Korea needs this summit and wants it. Yesterday, I think, is the first time, Maria, that we finally have some sense of where is Kim Jong-un, because the head, our delegation met with the North Koreans all day yesterday, they're doing it again uh, today. And now we're, gonna, we're seeing where are they? Is this just aspirational denuclearization that Kim Jong-un wants, where he wants to drag it out for many years and get sanctions and relief in return and possibly give up some nu nuclear weapons but not give them all up? Is that, where, where is he on President Trump's complete, verifiable, irreversible denuclearization. And we know there's differences there, Maria. So now our delegation is looking at those differences and saying, can we resolve these differences? Is it possible that, that forge some kind of an agreement here with the United States not falling into the trap that we have always fallen into before by giving something up with the promise of getting something in the future and then holding an empty bag in the future. That's kind of, I think, where we are. The president now has some insights that we don't have because his delegation has some sense of what the North Koreans have put on the table yesterday. And I'm sure they're reporting back to the president's advisors in Washington, D.C. about it. If he continues to be hopeful, that means that I think our delegation is looking at what Kim Jong-un has put on the table and is thinking that maybe we can resolve our differences. But the president had said that, look, we want to see efforts to denuclearize even before the meeting. And we know that those who have dealt with Kim Jong-un's father, Kim Jong-il, remember that he would make promises and never keep them in terms of denuclearization. So will, will he actually go for it? Will he actually make moves, show us evidence that he is moving to denuclearize? Yeah, well, here's what the evidence would be. I think here's what Song Kim, the head of our delegation, is actually what he's looking for. He wants to, full, first of all, he wants a full accounting of their nuclear weapons. To be frank about it, we don't know where all their nuclear weapons are and how many they have. We have our, we have our suspicions. So they've got to give us a full accounting of all of that. And then, two, they've got to show us what is the process by which we're going to be able to verify that you are, in fact, disarming and dismantling these weapons as well as your ballistic missiles. Show us that. And what's the time frame to do that in? So that is prima facie evidence that there's a program and a plan. And if those details aren't there, uh, kind of along those lines, I suspect that our delegation is going to have major problems uh, with the North Koreans here. So, so you don't even think the president would move forward unless those conditions were met? I think he shouldn't move forward unless he's, that our delegation is absolutely convinced that Kim Jong-un is serious about denuclearization. They can come up with a framework that, one, ends the Korean War and an armistice ends and there's a peace treaty coming in the future. They can repatriate the North and South Koreans, bring families back together. They're all positive things that are not hard to do. But then, if they're going to put their signatures on a piece of paper, uh, dealing with denuclearization, there really has to be a program and a plan there, and we don't give up one sanction for that signature. It's got to be real. Well, obviously, the U.S. is trying to do its part to show good grace and sort of, yeah. you know, uh, putting these new uh, Korean uh, s sanctions on hold. They were planning on putting those sanctions back in place today or yesterday. A decision was made to hold back. Well, they, they were not old sanctions. They were, they were new sanctions. They were going after some of North Korean dealings that they're doing in other countries, it, and it's all black market mostly stuff, and also hitting China and, and Russia. And the president decided, being there's some good faith going on here, kind of hold that in place. I think he's just, frankly, 
He's using it as leverage. Yep. Uh, because they know exactly what those sanctions are. And the North Koreans know when they look in the future, given what's already happened happen to them economically, what sanctions, what the impact is six months from now, a year from now, or two years from now, if they don't do anything positive. Yep. Great points, as always. General, good to see you, sir. Thanks so much. Yeah, good talking to you, Maria. General Jack Keane joining us.